Hey guys, Mr. Race here, and I'm going to help you guys out on the uh, 0.3. Uh, this is 1.5 from my old book, uh, Notes. Now, this is actually a video is going to be a little bit longer. It's going to have both sections in it because your assignment's only going to be one assignment. We'll talk about that halfway through the video, what you guys are going to do. All right, so the goal here is to have you guys solve and graph inequalities and also compound inequalities. So when it comes to graphing inequalities, what we want to do is you want to use a solid dot, okay, when you use a greater than or less than symbol. Actually, I said that back because that's less than, that's greater than. Actually, solid dot when you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Well, good morning, Mr. Riz. Let's not mess it up. You want to use an open dot when it's just less than or greater than. So if there's a line underneath it, you're going to fill the dot in. If it isn't, you leave it open. Okay, now when it comes to solving them, basically you're going to follow the same rules as any equation, except for you need to remember that you're going to flip the inequality symbol. All right, if you multiply or divide by a negative number. All right, so let's get this started here. If this was 16 plus x equals 1, we would go through and just minus 16. Since it's 16 plus x is less than or equal to 1, we're still going to do the same thing. We get x. We didn't multiply or divide by a negative, so we're not switching the signs. x is less than or equal to negative 15. Now, when it comes to graphing this, you know what? let me double check. Do I have a graph underneath this? No. All right. We're going to have you draw your graph, and I like to keep the graphs real simple. I don't want you guys wasting a whole bunch of time getting real intricate. I would always say the best thing you do here is put the special number right in the middle, negative 15. Tell me two numbers above it, two numbers below it. So negative 15, negative 14, negative 13 would be above it. Negative 16, negative 17 is below it. Tell me what kind of dot you're going to use. That's going to be a solid dot. And if it's less than, we're going to shade all the numbers smaller. We're going to go to the left. I'm just going to shade that in. You can see the arrow points which direction you should shade. All right, let's try the next one. <laughs> Excuse me. We're going to add 7 to both sides. We get negative 2x is less than or equal to 21 plus 7 is 28. And then we're going to divide by negative 2. Now, since we're dividing by a negative, we do need to flip the sign here. So change that to greater than or equal to, and that'd be negative 14. So there's the solution. We'll graph it so we can see what all the answers would look like. I'm going to put negative 14 in the middle. Two higher is negative 13 and negative 12. Two lower, all right, negative 15, negative 16. All right, so let's see. This would be a solid dot at 14. And it's greater than, so we're going to shade everything to the right of it. Okay, hopefully this isn't too bad. It's just the same thing we did in the last section, just that little extra rule with the shading. So if you want to try to pause this video, try these a little bit uh, tougher ones on your own, see how well you do. Okay, on this first problem, we have two Ks. They're on the same side, so we need to combine them. We're not getting rid of the smaller one. We're combining them, and we would get 6K plus 2, e or not equals, whoa, so used to what we were doing in the last section is less than negative four. We're going to subtract two to both sides and we get 6K is less than negative six. And we'll divide by six. Now, even though our answer is negative, we did not divide by a negative. We divided by a positive six. So the sign still is less than negative one. So to graph this answer on the line, we're gonna go to negative one. We're gonna put an open dot because it's just a straight up less than. And we're going to shade everything to the left of it. All right, now this one here, we'll distribute the three first to simplify. We get negative 21, because that's what three times negative seven is, plus three times K is 3K. It's greater than negative 36. Okay, we're going to add 21 to both sides. 3K is greater than, all right, negative 36 plus 21. What is that going to be? Negative 15. All right. 
and then we're going to divide by three. Answer is negative seven, but we didn't divide by negative, so it still stays greater than. So negative seven would be in between negative six and negative eight. It's right here. We'll shade everything to the right if it's greater than. Okay. All right, let's try some more examples here. Just kind of, you know, bumping up the difficulty little by little here. If you notice this problem is going to have variables on both sides, but we're not, uh, we're not going to solve that any differently. All right. So let's distribute here. We get negative five times one is negative five, and then negative five times the negative x is a positive five x. All right, it is less than two plus six x. Now, I always like to get rid of the smaller x. So between these two x's, we're going to subtract the five x. And we get negative five is greater than or equal to two plus one x, or just two x. 2 plus x. All right, and then we just need to di not divide, but minus 2 on both sides, and we get negative 7. All right, yep, negative 7 is greater than or equal to x. Now, here's the thing. When you write inequalities, you should always have your variable go first. Now, if we're going to switch these around, we need to make sure we switch the sides as well. Because if we have negative 7 is greater than or equal to x, that means x is less than or equal to negative 7. That's going to be a solid dot at negative 7. Shading to the left. If you're feeling pretty confident, you want to pause the video or try the next one on your own, I recommend it. Get this started. We're going to distribute the 4 here. So we get negative 5 plus 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 1 is 4. It's less than or equal to 6x plus 5. All right. Next, uh, we got, let's simplify this first. So we got 4x, negative 5, and a 4 is a minus 1. Okay. Now, just like the last problem, we have x's on both sides. We need to get rid of the smaller one. I'm going to subtract the smaller 4x. You technically don't need to. If you don't, you'll get a negative x over here, and then it means when you divide, you'll flip the sign anyway, so things are going to happen as long as you do the right steps. 6 minus 4x is 2x plus 5. Okay, and then we get rid of the 5. We subtract the 5 on both sides. Negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6. All right, we're getting there. We divide by 2, and we get negative 3 is less than or equal to x. We do need to put the x first, so this answer is going to be x, and we have to switch the order here. Since we're switching the order of the expressions, we switch the order of the signs. Get x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So that's going to be a solid dot at negative 3, and it's greater than, so we're going to shade to the right. All right, got some practice problems for you to try. Just more practice with this. It's a good, a lot of little things that can happen. So we're gonna make sure we're doing this right. If you wanna pause the video, we'll check to see if you guys got this right. All right, this first problem here, you're going to, you're gonna add 12 to both sides. We get 12, we get negative 10n is less than or equal to 180. When we divide by negative 10, we get negative 18. We do need to switch the sign. So it should be n is greater than or equal to negative 18. Solid dot here, shading to the right. On the second problem, All right, we're going to distribute the 3. So we get negative 21 plus 3k. All right. Then we're going to add 21 to both sides. 3k would be greater than, man, this seems familiar, negative 15. We're going to divide by 3. Get k is greater than negative 5. 
the sign never switched. We go to negative five, which is right here. It's an open dot. It's greater, so we shade to the right. And then the last practice problem here, uh, if we look, we have variables on both sides. We're gonna get rid of the smaller one. We get one is greater than, that would be seven V minus five V would be two V. We'll add 17 over to the one. One plus 17 is 18. And then we're gonna divide by two. So we get nine is greater than two V. All right, but we do need to switch it around. Oh, not by two V, it's just by single V. So we should have V is less than nine. So that graph here, nine in the middle, 10, 11, eight, seven, open dot going to the left, all those numbers less than. All right, so what you guys are going to do is your assignment's gonna be IXL C5 on algebra two, but you guys are gonna to have to get three ribbons uh, to get full completion. This is a two day assignment, so it's worth double the points. So hopefully today you can kind of, you know, if you want to stop this video, work on it, get your first ribbon, maybe try to get your second ribbon, that'd be good. But at the second part of this video here, I'm going to show you guys the special case scenarios. All right, now the other scenarios that we can have are compound inequalities, the ands or ors. That's where we can have multiple inequalities working together with one expression. All right, so compound inequalities, we have or statements. And then we can have and statements. All right, so an or statement is usually written like so. So if we look at this one, this one's kind of hard to see, but it looks like we have a solid dot here at, what would that be, at uh, negative four going to the left. And then we have an open dot at one going to the right. So we would say that X is less than negative four or x is greater than, or less than or equal to, and then x is greater than one. Now, when we have an or inequality, what we're going to do is just pretty much break these up into two separate problems and graph them on the same line. So this one here will subtract the six, and we get negative two a is less than two, eight minus six is two. When we divide by negative two, we get a, we do need to flip the sign is greater than negative one. So we're gonna go through this line here. We're gonna find negative one here and we're going to shade. All right. Now on the other side here, we're gonna solve that problem. You know what? I just realized that should be an open dot. I deleted everything, okay. Shading that way. Okay, now on the other side here, let's solve it. So we're gonna minus one from both sides. We get a divided by two is less than negative three. And to get rid of the divided by two, we're going to times by two. We get a is less than negative six. So we'll go over here, it's an open dot, less than here. Okay. So all you're really doing with or statements is you're getting two answers and you're graphing them on the same line. Now with and statements, we got to look at to see what's being overlapped. Uh, this one here, you can see it's hard to see, but we have a solid dot at negative two. It's shaded in between all the way to get to positive five with an open dot. So we could say that there's two different ways that we can write this. We can say uh, X is greater than negative two and x is less than five. Another way that we could write this here is we could say negative two is less than or equal to x, which is less than five. Basically saying that x is in between negative two and five. So just to kind of show you this example here, the and is having two inequalities that work together. So what we want to do when it comes to solving them, oops, I'm scrolling down too much, is, you know, we kind of break it up into two problems here. 
Uh, so this one here, we'll just solve it normally. So we'll minus three on both sides. We get two X is greater than negative 12. And we get X is greater than negative six. All right, so we would go through here. We'd graph that X is greater than negative six. Here, open dot, and we would normally just shade everything greater than negative six. All right, then we're going to look at our other problem here. Solve that. It's activity period, right? Yeah, I think so. Add two, we get eight X is less than 32. We divide by eight. X is less than four. We'd shade this way. No, I just realized something. But what we're going to do here is we're just going to then erase anything that's shaded extra. And we're only going to look at where it crosses both. And so there's the answer. Now, when we have them working together, we are going to break it up into two problems. The one problem is just going to be the first two together. So four is less than three P plus four. The other problem is going to be the last two. 3p plus 4 is less than 19. So you can see we can take two problems and kind of squeeze them together if they are the same expression. All right, so this one here will minus 4. We get 0 is less than 3p. If we divide by 3, we get 0 is less than p, or p is greater than 0. All right, so we got greater than 0, and we got everything to the right of that. All right, now on the other side here, we're going to minus 4, get 3p is less than 15. We divide by 3, p is less than 5. All right, that'd be an open dot at 5, shading everything to the right. Then we're going to go back with an and statement. We're going to take our eraser, and we're going to get rid of anything. We only want to keep what's overlapping. And we want to make sure we do have the right kind of circles here. They should both be open circles. It's kind of hard to see when they're both shaded. You can always go back and make it look neater if you want. So we've got two open circles between 0 and 5 and everything shaded in between. Now to wrap up this video, to wrap up this chapter, the, we got these two practice problems. See if you guys want to pause this video, try it on your own, see how well you do. All right, with this or problem here, we'll break them into two problems. All right, this first one, we're going to minus the three. We get 8a is greater than or equal to, well, that would be 48. We divide by eight. We get a is greater than or equal to six. Okay, so an or statement, we're going to just mark it down without be a solid dot bigger than six. An or, we don't have to worry about erasing. On the other one here, okay, let's see, 8a minus nine is less than 31. We're going to add nine over. We get 8a is less than 40. We divide by eight we get a is less than five. So that'd be an open dot and everything to the left of it. So it almost looks like the whole graph there, but it's just solid dot at six to the right and open dot at five to the left. And or we don't erase. All right, now this one here, we're gonna break up into two problems. We got a, is that a five? Yeah, I'm trying to do the math real quick to see if that would be, make sense. Yeah, a five is less than three H plus two. The other problem we have is three H plus two is less than or equal to 11. Let's work on the first one here. We're gonna minus two from both sides and we get three is less than three H. And when we divide by three, we get one is less than H or H is greater than one. Okay, 
I'm going to wait to see what our other numbers are before we mark this so we have kind of an idea since the numbers aren't marked on here. All right, and this one here, we're going to subtract two. So we get 3H is less than or equal to nine. And we get dividing by three, we get H is less than or equal to three. All right, so our answer is an and statement. And that means H is greater than one and it's less than negative three or positive three. So we get, uh, I'm just gonna put like a zero, one, two, three, four, five. Put some negatives on here as well. All right, means we're gonna have an open dot at one, a solid dot at, at three. Why do we keep saying negative? And since it's greater than one and less than three, that means it's gonna be in between these two numbers here and we'll shade. Okay, so this wraps up our chapter zero, our pre-algebra review. Um, if you guys have any questions, make sure you ask, but um, just, you know, make sure you're kind of understanding everything. If you got this section, you should be good and ready for the test that's coming up soon. I right, guess have a good one and I will see you later.